Hey guys, it's Sarah from She's Crafty and She Knows It. I am in my craft room. We have been snowed in for over a week now. We've had the rolling outages and frozen pipes like a lot of you have been experiencing. On top of that, I cut my finger really bad a month ago and had to get stitches uh, and it won't bend. And so I'm here with my messy bun. But I thought while we're snowed in and we can't go anywhere that I would do a quick little video answering some of your most common questions about my how to hand knit a chunky blanket video. So let's get started. Okay, so the number one question that I get asked is how much yarn did I use to make that blanket that's in the video? So I actually used four skeins. Each uh, ball of yarn is called a skein. I used four skeins, which was 216 yards, and the blanket ended up being 60 by 50 inches long. So the next question I get the most often is how much yarn do you need to make the blanket that you wanna make? So some of you are asking about making a baby blanket or a twin size blanket, a king size blanket, a lap blanket. And so the problem with that question is that it's so hard to answer. So how much yarn you need will depend on which yarn you use and uh, how loose or how tight you're knitting it. So I kind of want to show you some examples. And so the yarn that I used in that blanket video is a wool yarn. It was discontinued Michaels. It's a product that Michaels sells. They make themselves and they told me that it was discontinued actually last year. So you cannot find it. If you find it, you're probably gonna find it really overpriced for sale like on eBay or something. So I have another yarn that I recommend. It's not wool. The wool yarn is beautiful, but it sheds. So I have three little girls. They were sitting on it, pulling on it, and using it as a blanket, and it started to slowly shed, and big chunks were coming off. So I gave it to my mom. She lives by herself. She's taking good care of it. But if you want a blanket that you actually want to use, um, or you have kids around that might touch it, you probably don't want to do the wool. I just saw it at the store. I thought it was pretty and made that tutorial, not really thinking much about it. The yarn I recommend now is not wool. It's kind of a chenille. It's really soft and cozy. Let me show you. This is a blanket I made with this yarn. It is cheaper than the wool yarn. I will put a link to it in the description of this video. It's also in the description of the other video. Um, so this is it. So I just want to show you. So this blanket ended up being 68 by 48. I made it pretty long. My husband's six feet tall. I wanted it to be able to cover his toes when he's laying underneath it. So the problem with telling you how much yarn you need is that if you're using a wool yarn, you might need less. If you're using a yarn like this that's chenille, it's not as thick, you're going to need a little bit more. And there's also the factor of how big your loops are. So you see, I knit this one pretty tight. It's long, guys. It's like, it's really big and it's thick and it's super cozy. It's heavy. It feels really good. I know the wool one is beautiful, but this one is still really chunky and really nice. So this is tight, tight knit. This is six and a half skeins. So six and a half skeins of this. I did 28 stitches on the, the chain stitch. So 28 loops right there in the chain stitch. And it's 48 inches wide, just to give you an idea. And these are tight little loops. Okay, so another one I made with the same yarn is this one. This is a different pattern. I have this tutorial on my channel as well. It's like, it's rib stitch, so it's kind of stripes. This is really open. I mean, I can kind of stick my hand like this, four fingers in the loop. This is really open. This is about 18, I think. It's 18 uh, chain stitch on here. And then let me look at my notes. It is 36 inches wide and I made it 52 inches long. So this only took four skeins. See how open it is? So the more open you make it, the less yarn you're gonna need. So if you're doing the really tight, you want it really tight, uh, knit, closed holes, not like this, you're gonna need more yarn. So that's why I have a hard time answering y'all. So a, a king size blanket, it totally depends on how thick the yarn is that you're using and how tight your loops are. If you want one like this, let me pull it up off the ground. Um, this one in a king, you're gonna need way more yarn. I'd have to estimate and really look at it, but maybe more like eight to 10. Uh, possibly even 12 skeins to do it. But if you're doing a really open weave, you can maybe get away with six to eight. So if you want something that you just wanna throw over, I have this thrown over a uh, little cute bench that's in our entryway. If you just want something to throw over like an armchair or a bench, four skeins is enough to do a little lap blanket, do a loose weave, throw it over something. It's really cute. And you can do the open weave, not just with the, the ribs. This is a rib stitch pattern. You can do open weave with the other tutorial that um, just the regular doing the same knitting over and over again. So I hope that answers that question. I know that it's not probably the answer that you're looking for, but the real honest answer is that um, 
it just depends on the yarn that you use. And so like I said, I will link this yarn in the description below. This yarn does not shed. Um, it's just, if it does shed, I have knots on the back of it, so tiny little pieces, but the blanket as a whole does not shed the huge chunks. This stuff, I'm trying to pull it up, the way this pulling it down, um, it's really soft. And you see, we use this at movie night. I made this guy like a year ago. I mean, really, no damage. Honestly, I wouldn't lie to y'all. The wool one does not hold up. Do not make it if you want to use it for family movie night and stuff. This one, my whole family, if we do it like the width way across the sofa, can get underneath it and be really cozy. Okay, so just to recap, when it comes down to how much yarn you need to make the blanket that you want to make, it depends on which yarn you're using and how thick it is and then how tight your loops are. So really my rule of thumb is kind of that I get an estimate of what I think I need. So like for a smaller lap blanket, um, in this specific yarn, something like this, with like a medium sized loop, I would do something around four skeins. For a bigger, cozier one like this, that's tighter loops, anywhere from six to eight. So if you wanted one this size, that was looser loops, I would think maybe five, five-ish skeins would be good. If you want a thick one like this, um, say we're just going smaller loops really cozy, that's like a queen size, I would think maybe seven or eight skeins. Um, and then going up between queen and king, anywhere between eight, 10, 12, I've never made one that big. So I would probably get 10 and see what that did. And if I needed more, order more. Like that's for a king size. So my philosophy is get extra, whatever you estimate, get an extra skein or two. It's not that expensive. If you're close to a Michaels, you can return it afterwards. If you're not close to a Michaels, you can use the extra yarn towards the next blanket or for like the hand knit pillow or something like that. So I kind of get my yarn that I have, I do my chain stitch, and as I'm doing my chain stitch, I kind of have in mind what size uh, blanket I want. If I know that I want a twin size blanket, I take my yarn in there to the twin size mattress that I'm making it for, or if you don't have one, you're making one as a gift, lay out the measurement that you want, do your chain stitch until it's that width so that you know it's right. So I really just like do it as I go. Do the chain stitch, the width you want. Okay, now it looks like it's the right width, and it just so happens to be 18 uh, loops or 20, whatever. The number really doesn't matter as long as it's the width you want. And then as far as the length, I really just knit until it's the length that I want. So like with this huge one, I didn't have a specific even length in mind. I just knew I wanted to cover my husband's toes when he was laying on the sofa because um, he's six feet tall and I used to be able to cover him too. And so I just knit, I would knit literally rows at a time and then I would, <laughs> He was right next to me while we were watching TV and I'd throw it over him and be like, no, it needs a couple more inches. And I would just keep knitting. And then once it got long enough, I just stopped. So really it's kind of a, I do it as I go. I just get plenty of yarn and then I just keep knitting until it's the right length. So I hope that helps uh, kind of clear up some of the confusion. But really just remember four for kind of a lap blanket, maybe six to eight for a bigger blanket. And then when you're going to like queen and king size, I'm honestly not 100% sure I would get anywhere between eight, 10, 12, something like that, and kind of go from there. Okay, so the second most popular question is what yarn did I use? So I think I kind of covered that in the last one. The yarn that I use is, to, just to give you the answer, is called Free Spirit by Loops and Threads. So Loops and Threads is like a Michaels brand. Michaels, the craft store, has their own brand called Loops and Threads. Free Spirit was like the specific line of yarn that Loops and Threads made. That yarn has been discontinued I was told it probably wouldn't come back at all. I have not seen it in the store this past winter. I bought it the winter before, but I guess we're still in winter, but I have not seen it this year. Haven't seen it in a, probably 18 months at least. So the yarn I recommend is this one. I will link it in the description below the video um, and put some links down there for you to find it. But I love it. It's not wool, it holds up well. Okay, the next, the number three, the third most common question I get is how do you wash the blanket? Can you wash the blanket? So many questions about washing the blanket. I honestly had no idea that so many of you would, would be worried about washing the blanket. I'm glad that you're thinking about maintenance and how to take care of it. So I'm not trying to get out of answering your questions, so bear with me, but it's, it's another one of those not cut and dry uh, answers. Every single yarn has its own care instructions. So like the wool yarn that I used said you could wash it by hand in cold water. Obviously with a blanket that was as huge as that one, eight pounds, it was big. Um, you're gonna, you're not gonna do it in a washing machine. I don't even know if it would have fit. Maybe in the bathtub if you had to. Overall though guys, I would not wash this blanket unless you really got something on it. If your child has an accident on the blanket, wash it. If you spill coffee on the blanket, even something like coffee, I would wash the spot it spilled on 
but I would not throw this whole thing in the washing machine. Most of the yarns say hand wash by cold water. So if anything, I'd wash it in the bathtub with cold water. I have not tried to wash mine, just to be honest. I take good care of this the same way that like my mom crocheted me a blanket by hand when I was little and I still have it and I just take really good care of it. Um, so if you're gonna wash it, wash it by hand in cold water, hang it to dry, lay it out across a table or something. Don't put it in the dryer and don't wash in the washing machine. That's, that's my advice. Okay, another question that I get when it comes to kind of maintenance type stuff is how did that blanket hold up, the, the wool blanket? And so I think I kind of already answered that. The wool blanket did shed. It has not fallen apart. Like it's still in one piece. I wish we moved to Austin so my mom was not close to us proximity right now or I would have it with me to show you. And now that it's icy outside, I can't just go get it. But um, it is one piece, it looks fine. Obviously it has shed, but the parts that have shed, it's not like it's disintegrated. She has not tried to wash it. It is laid up across one of her chairs in her master bedroom, um, but it is together in one piece. But like I said, I would not use the wool unless you want it to just be a decor item that you have across an armchair and you don't have kids or dogs that are gonna go crazy with it. Um, this one with the chenille type yarn has held up great, like I said. We use it all the time. My husband uses it when he's reading his Bible. We use it for movie night. Um, I use it in our bed when I'm cold. We used it a lot this last week when we didn't have electricity and we literally were piling all the blankets. This is one of the heaviest blankets we have. Has a really good weight to it. You will love it. You will not be disappointed by this yarn. I promise you. Okay, another popular question. I lost count, honestly. I don't know if we're on question five or six. I don't know. But another question I get a lot is how long did it make you to take that blanket? No. How long did it take you to make that blanket? I am losing it. But the answer to that question, I put it so many times in the comments and I don't think many of you believe me, but that blanket in the video, the big wool thick one, took me an hour and 15 minutes to make. So that was me like recording. I did speed up in times over the, with the video speeded up so that it wasn't so long for you to watch, but it really only took an hour and 15 minutes from beginning to end. I would not lie to you guys, but that was with that really thick wool yarn. So I just did it and I was working fast, obviously. I was wanting to hurry so that the video wasn't five hours long. So I was working fast, I wasn't dilly-dallying, I wasn't watching TV, I was just doing it and talking to y'all with my kid in the room. So an hour and 15 minutes. Now, I wanna be honest with you, because I know I want you to know what you're getting into. This blanket right here, that I told you is 68 by 48, used six and a half skeins. This took me hours to do. So I mean, I honestly didn't keep hardcore track. I did it over maybe three or four nights and I did it while I was watching TV. So I was kind of, which is fun to me, that's more relaxing than like stressing and doing it straight. So I did it sitting there like kind of knitting and every now and looking down and looking up at the TV and looking down. So I probably worked on it an hour for three or four nights in a row. So I would expect a big blanket like this with a tight, tight weave to be several hours. Anywhere from three to maybe five if you're slow. Um, so I expect to do hours. The open weave one, I don't even know guys, I probably did this in an hour, maybe even less than an hour. This is four skeins and it's real open. It's it's easy, it's easier than the tight knit one. Um, so yeah, an hour, if you're slower, maybe two hours. These are not like a 12 hour, this is not like when you're crocheting or knitting with tiny yarn. This is not a three day type project. It can be fast. Okay, one of the questions that I've had several times is somebody asking, saying, hey, I dropped a stitch what do I do? So if you don't remember when we talked about it, dropping a stitch is when you're like, I have this all turned around. When you're going across and you're knitting across and you miss a loop. It's hard to tell on that one because that one is uh, kind of stripey. But you're going, you're going across and say this loop I didn't, I, I missed and I went on and knitted this one. So what happens is when you do that, if you keep knitting and keep knitting and you get way up here, you're gonna realize at some point there's a big loop hanging that's not attached to anything and your blanket will unravel. And so guys, I did this, I did it on this blanket, believe it or not, because I was watching TV and I was distracted and about this far in, I had dropped a stitch and I had made it all the way to down here and there's really not a way to fix it to make it where it's gonna look nice and hold up. You could probably stitch it to something next to it, even with a needle and thread and make it hold up, but it's not gonna look nice and I'm kind of perfectionist so I undid a huge section, guys, like 30, 45 minutes worth of work at least, and redid it. So I'm sorry if you dropped a stitch, 
you're gonna probably, if, you, if you're a perfectionist and you care how it looks, undo it. I know it stinks, but undo it, go back and do it right. I know that's not a good answer, I'm sorry. Um, another one was where people were saying that their blanket was curling or it was an odd shape. They got done and it was like weird looking. So I don't know exactly if that happens. I've been telling y'all to, to message me on Instagram. You can find me at She's Crafting. She knows on Instagram and send me pictures of what's happening. And I'm much quicker there to respond than I am on YouTube. So message me on Instagram, show me what's happening and I'll try, try my best to help problem solve how to fix it. I'm guessing that if it's curling, like literally people have sent me pictures where the edges are curling. And the problem with those has been that it's been a really thin yarn. So I would not go any thinner than this. You can kind of see how big one piece is. This is the yarn that I used. I actually did a tutorial, the rib stitch tutorial. I used this yarn so you can see me working with it. I wouldn't go thinner than this yarn. If you do yarn thinner than this and you're doing tight loops, it probably isn't a curl and it's gonna be very hard for you to work with. So I'm assuming if it's curling, your yarn's probably too small, maybe your loops are too tight. If you have like a weird shape and it's like curvy and twisty looking, my best guess, it's hard without seeing it, my best guess is that maybe somehow you're adding or dropping loops. Like you're adding a stitch in somewhere, it is possible to actually stitch two times put through the same loop. So if you're distracted with kids or homeschooling or watching TV, it's really easy to skip a loop or, or add a loop or do something crazy uh, if you're not counting. So I would assume that if we went back and counted your rows and really saw what happened, it might be something like, oh, I started with 28 in the chain stitch, but then it's 28 for a couple rows, and then all of a sudden it's 26. And then it's 28 again, and then it's 30. I think there's something weird going on. That's my best guess. I, I wish I could see it. Like I said, message me on Instagram so I can see your specific problem and try and help you out the best I can. Okay, guys, the hundredth question. I'm just kidding. We're not at a hundred. I don't know where we are. Seven, eight. But the last question that I'm going to answer is what other kind of patterns or tutorials do you have with hand knitting? So several of you have asked. So I showed you, this is like the same tutorial that the how to hand knit a chunky blanket video is, just simple knitting. Um, you can tell it's all the same stitch. Every stitch is knitting, the back is purling. The other one I showed you, the, the rib stitch, it's kind of stripey. So this is alternating the knitting and the purl stitch. This is a video that I already have on my YouTube channel. I will put a link to it in the description below the video. But that's the rib stitch blanket. My hand knit pillow is somewhere in this house. I don't know, this house is crazy right now. But I also have a YouTube video of how to hand knit a pillow. So I use that for my leftover yarn. If you, like when I did six and a half skeins and I have a little bit extra, just make a small little cute hand knit pillow and you can make bigger ones and whatever. So I will also put the link to that video below this. So there's three all together that I have. The regular how to hand knit a chunky blanket like this. I have the rib stitch one and then the hand knit pillow. Hopefully I'll be making more hand knit fun things that I will share with you. But for now that's all I have. So like I said, if you have any questions, comment below on this video or find me on Instagram and send me messages or pictures or whatever there. And then if you make gorgeous blankets or hand knit pillows, I would love to see them. So send me pictures. Tag me on Instagram so I can share them with everybody that follows me because they would love to see it as well. And I just love seeing what y'all are making. Okay, so if you like this video and you found it helpful, please give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that way when I make new hand knit tutorials, you won't miss them. Okay guys, don't mind me. I'm just gonna be over here bundled up. We were told to conserve electricity and keep our thermostats at 60. So when I'm not with you guys doing videos, this is pretty much how I look. Bye.